Absolutely. When you're inside a fish house, you've got an issue with, with roof height or length of rod in, in some of the wheelhouses. And so I'll, I'll adjust it based on if I'm outdoors fishing on a bucket or standing or actually fishing out of the cab of the pickup truck. Uh, I like the longer rods in those situations, but when you're in a fish house, a lot of times it's really dictated by how much room you have. I purposely pick my houses with high ceilings. And even my portable houses, I use like the X200 from Clam because it's got a, a high ceiling. And that way, I like using, for walleyes, anywhere from a 28 to 34 inch rod. It, I'm prepared for all, all things then. I can handle a big fish and, uh, or catch you know two pounders all day long. I don't like using the super short rods. And so right from the very, very beginning, I stay in that, that length reference for, for walleyes. But I make sure that house has a high enough ceiling. Most people, when they go to look at a house, they have to stand up. And if they're a tall person, yeah, I can stand up here. It's not really the most important thing to me. It's whether I can tease that fish up. And a lot of times, if you can get them up and hot, they bite. But you still have to have room for a hook set, even on a little longer rod. So to, in a short uh, answer, I like using a little bit longer rods in or out of the houses. Uh, I definitely use a longer rod outside. In fact, I wish they made longer houses, bigger houses, taller houses, because I really like these long rods a lot. And, and the, what I don't like about long rods inside of a house is that every time you catch a fish, it goes thwop at the top of the house. And every time I go thwop, I let everybody in the county know I just caught one. A lot of times I'll use a shorter rod. I have the 25 inch quick tip and 25 inch light. When I go outside, I'm using a 30. I don't even mind a 35 inch. Uh, even long rods are nice, they all have their place, but inside, you don't want to hit the fabric, you want good hook sets. Shorter rod on the inside, longer rod on the outside, and as far as line, fluorocarbon to fluorocarbon has a better sink rate. Could you carry a rod over for both applications? Yes, but I think once you take your game to the next level, that would be like uh, a golfer, you know, does he use a one wood uh, for every shot? as you would a three wood. So the answer would be no. Um, so I would say once you start perfecting your profession and understanding ice fishing, you're going to want typically a different rod inside and outside in order to take your game to the next level, I would say. No, my, I'm using the same, same rod when I'm fishing off my snowmobile or if I fish in, in, in my house. If you fish a lot of super lines, you need to keep it warmer or fish with bigger guides but I'm a, a mono guy, so I'm using the same rod inside or outside. When I'm fishing inside a heated shelter, um, you have the opportunity to fish many different ways. You can pick and choose. You can pick different reels um, that are temperature sensitive. You can use different lines. You can use a braided line. You can use whatever you want, and it works fine. Now, the minute you step outside that shelter, and it's minus 20 or minus 10, now that's where things change. That's where reels and equipment don't work the same. When you're outside and it's really, really cold, you know, you really want to focus on mono fluorocarbon outside in those cold applications where, you know, the braid and stuff don't work as well. It doesn't. When I first started, I had indoor and outdoor setups. Um, I'd only have a couple with braid. Now I've gotten exclusively 100% away from braid to where I need all my setups in day-to-day -day guide used to be able to be able to go from indoor to outdoor so I don't have to carry around 50 rod and reel combos with me. You know a lot of times you know we're trying to use specialized tools for whatever we're doing obviously on a good day of fishing you use the same rod everywhere for a lot of different things and, and catch fish but as a rule of thumb when I'm fishing inside it's typically when I'm hunkering down I fall in the fish and I'm having a hard time with bite detection. See, it's a 30 mile an hour wind, it's 10 degrees, there's snow, there's slush, snow filling up my hole, and I've got a tough bite. I'm gonna flip over a shack, and that's gonna give me a big advantage as far as just blocking the elements off my line and off my rod so that I can see the bite and, and control that delicate presentation. And so a lot of times I'm using a lot more finesse and I'm using shorter rods where that, that rod tip is closer to my eyes as far as just watching it and just really controlling that tight quiver. And um, a lot of times when I'm not fishing in a shack, typically it's when I, I'm not on fish and I have to fish more aggressively, sample water, drill a lot of holes and find out where there's no fish and then finally find them. And typically then, you know, I'm trying to 
you know, I'm fishing a lot more aggressively. I'm dropping down, see if anybody's home, and I'm reeling up, and I'm using longer rods. And uh, a lot of times I'm using bigger profiles, heavier lures, where I'm in that search mode. I just, you know, typically when you're in that search mode, the first few fish are going to make you look good. They're going to be easy to catch. As you sit on that spot and catch more fish off that spot, wear out your welcome, then you have to resort more and more to finesse. And so that's type the, you know, the type of change of the progression that I make. Short finesse inside the house typically, longer power fish per se when I'm fishing outside trying to find them. If you're inside of a shack, you can't fish with too long of a rod. And uh, if you're outside, I like actually standing and fishing. Uh, so a little bit longer makes it nice to basically have your rod tip all the way down to the hole. Uh, so that if there's any wind whatsoever, it's not blowing slack into it and you're still really getting positive feeling from the lure below and if you get a strike, way easier to set the hook and detect it in the first place. You know, I don't fish outside when it's uh, 20 below or 15 below. I'm, I'm getting older and I want to sit inside a little bit more comfort, but I will go outside when it's nice out. I don't change anything up, no. When I'm outside, it depends on the depths I'm fishing more often than not, but I'm, I'm going to use more longer rods when I'm... I, I've gotten to the age where I don't want to sit or kneel. I want to stand um, more than more often than not. So I'm going to use my long rods, and then um, in the, in the hut, you know, just depends. Probably the 24 incher. If I'm not sight fishing, otherwise I'm going to the little 18 inch. So yeah, the 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 sight fishing rod when I'm when I'm looking down the hole, I don't want to have my arm out here. You know, I'm not going to fit in my little hideout. Even though it's a big roomy shack, it's I need you know I need the short pole. So if I'm if I'm fishing straight away deeper water, I'm going to use the 24 inch, and then if I get outside, I'll go to the 32 or the 30 inch or the 48 inch. You know, like golfers need golf clubs, right? Uh, you need the right rod for the right presentation. When you're inside fishing, it's totally different. The elements are different. When you're outside, you're dealing with wind with weather, um, certain situations you want stand-up rods, you want long rods, other situations you want short rods, and absolutely they change. The actions can change, the lengths can change, a lot can change about my setups, whether I'm inside the house or outside. Uh, line, uh, line can make the biggest difference as far as using braided line versus monofilament. Um, all those things factor into the rods that I rig up for, for fishing, especially in the winter, you know, when you're dealing with so many different types of weather patterns and elements.